Friends, enemies, and the indifferent, welcome again to another podcast of Knights of the Black Sun. This time I'm delighted to <coughs> greet a, a very old friend of mine, um, Malcolm Scruff Luty of the uh, the iconic uh, Newcastle band, uh, Hell Bastard, uh, somebody who I've been in touch with off and on over the years, um, and who seems to have remained true to himself and done his own journey. So I wanted to tuck in here and... Um, and uh, pick the man apart, see what makes him tick. So welcome to you, Scruff. Good to speak to you. How are you doing? Nice to speak to you, Rob. What a pleasure. Brilliant. And yeah, I think you're all the way across in the US of A, is that right? Uh, um, uh, not. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> okay, I but get you. All right, just on holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll skip through that a bit. I wanted to yeah. really sort of, um, I wanted to take you back to the, the uh, right to the beginning, really, uh, to get a bit of an insight to who Scruff is, um, your upbringing, because from what I gather, the conversations that you and I have had over the years, you, you've had a pretty rough, rough time of it, really, and uh, quite, a, quite a journey, really. So tell me about growing up. Is, was it Newcastle itself? No, it was a, a place called Wickham. Mm -hmm. Which is about, which is uh, uh, about seven miles from Gated, which is about eight miles from Newcastle upon Tyne. So, and um, that's where that's where I grew up, Wickham, mm -hmm. before moving to Gated. Uh, me and me brother, Big Toot, me mom and me dad, and uh, things were great. It was a really good time, um, and then it went downhill quite rapidly. Was Wickham like a little village, or yes, a, a, a little village, yeah. Yeah. Right, so, was, so you, yeah. you you have like a village life and all the kind of like the the nice neighbours and all that kind of stuff at one point. Absolutely, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, it was a, it was you know, it's, it was it it was a it was a quite an idyllic life for for two boys mm -hmm. in a family. You know, my mum was working, my dad was working. Uh, there was there was no the, 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 we didn't want for anything. Uh, we learned a lot, you know, but then it went downhill very rapidly so yeah and, and why was that was that because of the move or were there other sort of extraneous circumstances well um me me father he was very old he was a very old guy mm -hmm. um i'll 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 quickly i'll quickly i'll, I'll quickly just mention this because some people kind of enjoy the romance of it yeah. um me me dad me no i'm i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy I'm busy talking. My dad <laughs> was my dad was a um, what was like a ticket tout in London. Okay, and he'd move. He he was adopted in uh, Johannesburg in South Africa, mm -hmm. and he'd come back to England. Anyway, me 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 mum wanted a wanted to be a nurse, and the family were really poor. You know, my nana had nine children. My mum was one of them, and uh, the, the family were really poor, and um. Uh, me nana had saved and saved money for me mom because there was no money. There was well, for no when she got year. married or or what? No, no, no. This is uh, I'm just leading up to that. So, so me 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 nana had saved me mom loads of money and sent her off packing to London to the nursing mm -hmm. college in, in, in Islington, I believe. And whilst there, she ran out of money. Mm -hmm. So, so she got a job as a shorthand typist. Can you remember Rank Films, the bare chested yeah. guy banging the gong? Yeah, the, the big she gong was, thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She was working for Rank Films. Anyway, uh, there was this guy. He was like a sixties heartthrob, Tony Curtis, the guy with the silver <laughs> teeth. He would wait. Yeah, he would wait outside the lift because my mum would take manuscripts to an office further up the road. Yeah, and they were film manuscripts, and which she typed up. And there was only one copy, you know, the, mm -hmm. they were very, nice. very important. And he, anyway, he, she would come down in the lift and Tony Curtis would be there with flowers, and chocolates. You know? No way. Yep. Yep. Every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. He really was after me, ma'am. He wow. really was. And she was like, I'm not interested in your yachts and your gold and your diamonds and, your, and all your money and your house in Malibu and Seychelles and your, and your posh cars. I'm not interested in your fancy, fancy, fancy stuff. But he wouldn't take no for an answer. Anyway, one day she come down in the lift. He was there with chocolates and flowers, and she walked out into the street. And it was very windy, and a lot of the manuscripts left their hands. You know, the wind blew blew this these manuscripts from her from her from her hands, mm -hmm. and and she was picking them up. And this guy came along, 
a bit of a bit trampy, and uh, bang and and picked up the last two bits of A4 um, manuscripts. Yeah, and um, he he looked at that and and he said, "We're going to get married." That was my dad. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah, so that was that. So that was a long time ago. But yeah, but that's so what a fantastic really, story. You know, it's kind of like that's like uh, Tony Curtis doing the um, uh, wrestling with. Um, uh, who's the guy with it? Uh, Kirk Douglas in the Vikings? You know, it must be I, his dad was like the Viking come down to sort him out. Yeah, definitely. But we, <laughs> but we, that's but a fabulous we, story. Thank you, Rob. Me, me, mum. Uh, prefer, you know, me, mum liked the, 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 uh, the, 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 the roughness, the, yeah. the roughneck of me dad rather than the the, the pristine movie star. So the yeah, honesty of was, the man, I guess. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she she kept it real. She was keeping it real. But I bet she's kicking Even herself then. though at some point, eh? Well, uh, no, 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 she, no, no, she, no, no. She, she never, she never regretted. She never regretted oh, that. Nice. I mean, she she, had, she she finally committed suicide in 1981. So, well, we'll but, get uh, to that, uh, won't we? And that's that's yeah. uh, tragic. Yeah. It's, uh, terrible tragic. So, but so did but, you? Your mum and dad got on pretty well and everything like that. Or? Yeah, they look. <laughs> Like one day I'm in the garden, right? My dad was showing me how to plant seeds, right? He was showing me how to plant carrots, Brussels sprouts, onions, uh, loads of vegetables. And me and my brother were there. Anyway, my brother went off to play with his mates on probably on bikes or, or go karts or something like this. And um, and I, I, I ran in the house because I got really excited about about this row that had the row of row of potatoes coming up because my dad said cover the leaves, cover the green leaves, and it pushes out more potatoes from the from, yeah. you know it it it, it promotes a, a better I crop. Agree. Anyway, yeah. I I got all excited because the first lot of tatties were coming up and I and I'd covered them up already with soil and I ran in and my mum and dad were having a kiss in mm -hmm. the kitchen and I thought I thought this is my first experience with this and I was like oh, and I ran away. <laughs> and they ran after me and they said, no, this is what happens when people love each other. They, right. You know, I, and I was like, right, okay, and I, I got that. Yeah, we, they, they they were crazy for each other. They loved wow. each other. But um, yeah, it all went sour. So. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Tell me about that, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, me dad, me dad, well, first I remember a man coming to the house. Me mum had left. She'd went to Birmingham with nursing friends. And a man came to the house and cut the electricity off. And then and about three days later, someone came and cut the gas off. So we had no electricity, no gas. And then another man came and cut the water. We actually had no water. They'd stopped the water. Wow. Unbeknown to me and my brother, my dad had got it, gotten into gambling. Oh, shit. And, uh, yeah. And so my mum wasn't there. It was just me and my dad. And we were starving. You know, we were we were we were hungry we, mm -hmm. we we used to go to the swimming baths to get washed uh, there was a river nearby that's in the summer we'd we'd wash in the river but i remember one day we went on this walk and me, me dad and me brother big two were having an argument and me brother wanted to go this way and me dad wanted to go another way anyway they had this big argument and fallen out and me brother come running back after five minutes really excited he'd found five quid he'd found yeah. a fiver yeah yeah and we ate like kings from that. Anyway, on that walk, we on that walk we found a load of tatties. We found a load of tatties, a load of potatoes. And um, we went back home, got a wheelbarrow, and we just we we just had so much. We we just took as many potatoes as we can. We filled backpacks with them. I mean, we were starving, you know. Yeah. We were like starving, literally. Upper starving. Hungry. So yes. yeah, that happened. And mm -hmm. um, and then. It was it was pretty it was pretty, it it was it was a life lesson hard learned but uh, but but then me mum came back and me and me brother went with me mum and then me dad died in 1976. Oh dear, right? How did you how did your dad die then? So yeah. How, how did how did he go? Yeah. Um, he was in a hospital. Mm -hmm. He was he was in a hospital in Gateshead and um there was some I, I don't know he was really old. He okay. Was really yeah. Old. yeah. He was really old, and he passed away in hospital. And I remember some of I regret to this day. Me mom and me brother, big two, it, it saw me playing on my bike in the mm. in the street, and said, "Do you want to come and see your dad in hospital?" And I said, "No, I'm too busy playing with my mates on my bike." Anyway, he died that day, and uh, mm. so I didn't get to see him. So. Oh dear. Uh, you and two were always close, weren't you? 
Uh, we used to fight like cat and dog. Well, we used to, when when we fought, we fought. I mean, we we would put, throw punches with intent to hurt each other. <laughs> we, but we we no, we would. But if anyone else tried to hurt them, I'd 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 you know it was brother. It's brothers, isn't it? It's brothers. Yeah. Yeah, it's typical. We would fight like cat and dog. In the in the later years, I would say you're an alcoholic, and he would say I'm depressed. So we, we yeah. used to argue about that a lot. And he used to say to me, he'd come to me flat, and he'd say, you know, in Gated, where you stayed, you and Andy yeah, yeah. and uh, Gene, we had beard, yeah, um, and Stig and that. And he and there was one time he came over. Then I was I, I got this new band demo. I can't remember which band it was, but I was loving it, and I was playing this demo, some band from Canada called Voa, and I was loving this demo. And he just said, that's all you fucking doing it. That's all you are. It's all you are. You're all just about music. And we had this terrible, terrible fight. It was, oh, we had many. It was crazy. But yeah, I, 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 there's not a day goes by when I don't miss him. Did you uh, did you get into the same music at the same time? Or was he the older brother doing his own thing? Did he have a scene that he got into? He brought punk rock to the house. He he would he would bring he would go off to London and he would bring records and tapes and magazines back and stuff like this. He would he he I got into music because of him. Mm. I mean, the first record I bought was Telstar by which because I got it from my mum because yeah. my mum loved it. I found it at Paddy's Market, which used to be a five four o'clock four a.m. five a.m. market on the, on a Sunday before the big massive newcastle upon tyne quayside market which was huge which yeah. is all sadly gone now but uh I, I was like i was listening to david soul don't give up on me baby and uh, wow. telstar and yeah, my yeah. old man's a dustman and things like this but he he introduced me to punk so and i wasn't allowed to go in his room but when he wasn't in i'd sneak in his room and play his punk records <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah, I mean, David Soul, God, he come down to Tavistock when we were kids. About must have been about nineteen seventy five, seventy six. You know when, right. when he was big. It was like uh, Silver Lady, wasn't it? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And all, all that crap. Yeah, and yeah. You know, the local school girls were going mental about it. You know, oh my God, David right. Soul's in there. Yeah. But, you know, he, he allegedly he lived on the end of Wood Woodborough Road in Radstock. Hey. And he and he was in a wheelchair and he used to write under a pseudonym and he just wrote and then he died. A postman, a postman said, you know who lives in that cottage? It was just opposite Radstock Hotel, where Wireworld was, or whatever it was called. There was a thing. Anyway, just near there, just at the bottom of that road, on that turnpike. David and apparently, Yeah, apparently he lived there. And um, he wrote under a pseudonym, allegedly. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. Crazy. So are you still living in Radstock now, then, are you? I am. Yeah. I am, yes. Yes, Radstock, yeah. Somerset, because yeah, you you were down Plymouth for a while as well. So yeah, you you've, you've right. kind of been all over, haven't you? I have, Rob. I have. I've 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 been a bit of a bit of a nomad. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. let's come back to um. Let's come back to the the late seventies, and you're getting into music. You're you're nicking um your older brother Toots records and 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 getting things going there. So did did you both start bands, or was it just you that got into that kind of thing? And when was no, that? Mate. Uh, my my brother had a band before me. They were called Enema. Mm -hmm. He had a band. They even, you know, they had their own patches designed. They never did a studio demo, but they rehearsed. And uh, there was one time they were practicing, and I said to the guitar player who's called Chizzy, I said, uh, "Can I play a guitar? Can I have a go?" And uh, we we started jamming, and my brother was like, "Fuck this! This is you should do this, not me." And that mm -hmm. was. That was a long, long old time ago. That was even that was even before joining a London band called the Apostles. Yeah. So that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Apostles is a, is a kind of weird thing, isn't it? Because that was like such a culty band even then, even amongst the yeah. the sort of yeah. anarcho punk stuff. It's like the, the Apostles was buried deep, you know. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was basically the mind work of Andy Martin and Dave Fan and uh, Pete Bingle, the original guitar player. He was a very, uh, very clever, clever guy. But yeah, they had, you know, they had all that. They had all that stuff going on. They were hated, of course, yeah. by, by, by the Crass Crass Brigade. Yeah. And uh, because because of the pro class war sentiments and you know guns, yeah. boots, and bombs and stuff like this. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Did you and, did you move down to London then to be around that scene or? I didn't. I ran away from home and I and I lived in a squat in Hackney for 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 quite a while. And then I got caught by the authorities and they moved me into a children's home in oh, back right. in Tyne and Weir. Yeah. Wow. So what yeah. were you like 15, 16 at that time or something? Uh, so uh, so it was. My ma, my ma died in nineteen eighty one. So it would have been 
between 81 and 84. So I was, I, I mean, I, I was missing school, you know, I was missing school and I was, I got, they, they got, they caught up with me. They, they got me. They, I mm. answered the door. I answered mm. the door and they knew who I was and they got me and took me and put me in a kid's home. Yeah. Well, I mean, to, to be fair, and, and there are people that won't know your story as well, but the, I don't want to label that point at all, but you had a very, very tragic thing happen with your mother as well. And it's like you, you and I have talked about it and yeah. I can't imagine I really can't imagine anybody going through that and still maintaining their sense of purpose or meaning or anything in life. So, you know, I, I, I'm hats off to you for having survived so many, so many tragedies, really, including your brother and your mother and uh, your father going early and all this kind of stuff. So I, I don't know whether you want to talk about that because we can skip right over that. And uh, that's your own private business, you know? Well, it, 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 it's a very, it's a very sad sad topic but it's, it's i don't talk about it i don't talk about it and i yeah. have talked about it with you i mean i'm I'm like an open book as well I, i've got nothing to hide and i don't fucking i, I, I don't beat around the bush me when my brother died and we were cleaning out his apartment in plymouth i found a diary and it belonged to me mum. and in the diary it said raped by bp right it said raped by bp and uh this is after me this is after so this was this was after me dad died my mom got a solicitor because mm -hmm. she did want a divorce she was she was she wanted a divorce from me dad but bp i knew those initials and i know who it was okay. and then and then when i lived when i moved to radstock when i left um uh, uh chippenham and moved to Ra left plymouth left chippenham caution and moved to radstock uh, I, I found an old auntie a surviving auntie and she contacted me and uh, we would write a few letters to each other. And she called me one time and, and I mentioned it to her. And she said, oh, that wasn't the first time. There was, and I was just, <laughs> but my family oh, mm. was so, dis not dysfunctional in in social etiquette and things like this. It's just, just they, it, I don't know, it's weird. It's it, 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 it's bizarre how, how, ostracized they were from others you know me me nana and me mom what me mom's mom were really strong together and me yeah. granddad do you, how do you mean but, ostracized uh, do you mean like they were left out of out of the sort of social circles and stuff that kind of thing well yeah yeah and they, but do you know I mean, why that was i don't know i don't know poverty comes into it a lot but mm -hmm. there was there was one of me uh mom's sister she lived next door to diana Dawes. The actress right. in 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 Buckinghamshire, yeah, yeah, and um and 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 these people were alive when I went into a kids' home, and that kind of got me, that kind of made me a bit angry because they could have adopted me or they could have just sure. took me in, but instead, because me nana and granddad were still alive and they were too young, mm. but 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 that wasn't my first venture into children's home. I first went into a children's home in 1979. My mum mm. had me had me um, put into a children's home in 1979 because I was uh, unruly, shall we say. Okay. You, I mean, you you obviously loved your mum dearly, but you you, did, yes. you think you were a difficult person at that stage. I was. I, yeah. I was. I was always getting in trouble with the police. I was breaking into places, setting fire to things. Yeah. Uh, basically, like, a, a, probably cries for help. Yeah. Because I, so, I just wanted someone to listen to me. Yeah. It, it was, but I mean, it's funny because you, listening to you talk now, it's like you you seem to have had a really stable family. And most people, when they when they talk about these sort of things, episodes in their life, it's because you know there was a beating from your dad, or there's this, or there's that, and all. Oh God, that. no. Yeah, right. So no, me, when me when me dad died, when me dad died, me mum, it was it was 1980, 79, 80. She met a tall, dark, handsome chap, and he was he was. When he was full of liquid courage, he was a bastard. Oh, and God. I used to keep a crowbar under my bed for when he used to come and attack me. Because oh. I would, I, I never used it on him. My brother punched him once and he knocked him about 10 foot from the kitchen into the sitting room. He was six foot five, yeah. right? This guy, his name was John Macarus and he was a nasty bastard. And my mum fell in, my mum, you know, he's a tall, dark, handsome chap. My mum liked him. Yeah. And um, he, he was a nasty bastard. And, um, he, uh, uh, I just got, I just fell deeper and deeper into glue sniffing when me. So did he, did he become like the stepdad figure then? Then he, he tried to, but he wasn't, but he was a nasty. Bastard. You, you, a got, you boys rejected him, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. He was a drunk. Yeah. He used to slash. I used to get in from school, and it looked like there'd been a pig slaughtered in the sitting room. Mm. The, the walls were covered with blood. He was, he was a hopeless, poor, 
poor example of a. Of, he never worked. He didn't. He didn't bring any money into the house. Um, yeah. He. But my mom was lonely. She was lonely. It yeah. took me years. It took me years to realize that why she killed herself. Yeah. And I. And she was lonely and sad. Yeah. Even with uh, with somebody there, she's still lonely. Yeah. Yeah, because he 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 didn't he 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 didn't he didn't understand the concept of love, right? And and uh, he he didn't understand what it is to love someone. Yeah, he so was. He had that, a, I guess, with your with your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, well, that's yeah. terribly sad. So so when yeah, you say your your mum did take her own life, um, and that that must have been just the crushing moment for you as a kid. Um, <laughs> When I found her, when I woke up on the 12th of December, it was a Saturday, I think. I woke up on the 12th of December and I found her. There was a suicide note, which I read. Mm. She was blue and she and, and, and there was four foot of snow outside. It was 12th of December. And this was in Burtley, Barley Mow, County Durham. Because we we had to move from Gateshead because the roof caved in on our house. Yeah. And and we, we got we got put into temporary, temporary housing. And uh, we weren't in this place. And um, I'll never forget it. I, 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 I walked away. I had a pair of jeans on, Doc Martin boots and a T-shirt. And it was freezing outside, but it was sun, the sun was shining. And I walked from Barley Mow, Burtley, County Durham, to Gated and went to see some punk rock friends and then ended up in New in, by the coast um, with with Jane, my friend, who who at that time was going out with the conflict guitarist, Kev. Kevin, who 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 killed himself as well, I believe. He suicided as well. So you walked, but, um, you walked away. You you found your mother. Yeah. After she had committed suicide, and you turned yeah. turned and walked and went from there. Yeah. I did. It's a very on the eleventh of December. I'd planned to steal a motorbike because mm. I was obsessed. I was obsessed with motorbikes. I couldn't ride one, but I knew where there was one, and I walked in the snow. About twelve o'clock at night, midnight, walked in the snow, got the bike, brought it back to put in our shed. Then, I, th then for some reason, I looked behind me and I thought, "Shit! If it doesn't snow again, they're going to see the tracks. They're going to know who's still in the motorbike." <laughs> so I took the mo so I took the motorbike back to where I stole <laughs> it from, sneaked in the window, and I could hear typing because my mum loved typing. She was a write. She used to write a lot, you know. Okay. And um. And she, I think she had a little contract with Mills and Boone, you know the okay. company Mills yeah, and yeah. Boone that used the to romantic do novels, yeah, yeah. And I, she was typing, and I could see the we had a cool fire, and I could see the flickering, and I thought, God, it's late. Why is she doing that? Little did I know she was, she was t typing out, typing out a suicide note, and then taking all the tablets, and she just, yeah, and she uh, did that. I found found her the next day, yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, so. Yeah, that's that. So, well, yeah. yeah, that's that's that. But I mean, I, I, as I say, I don't, I don't really know anybody else that's, that's that has a story like that. And and you know, it's just uh, that's so far in the dark, particularly for well, a young kid as well. That uh, it's surprising that you've made a, the recovery that you have through your life, and that you're still well doing I, your thing. I, I, I think, I think, Rob, you know, I think on the on the concept of death, anyway, you know, um. I've, you know, we, we we we've both had lots of people that have, you know, I mean, Christ, you knew the Bristol crew, you knew the London crew. We've both had friends and people that have died, you know. Yeah. But I think my mum used to say, well, when I was a kid, my mum would talk about flying saucers and UFOs to me, to me, to me, Nana, yeah. and uh, talk about a lot of stuff. And my mum, I'll never forget this. My mum said, when I die, put me in an orange box and float me doing the time, just <laughs> float me in the river. But, you know, and I have that same principle. I, I, I'm not going to rot in, in an NHS bed in England or anything like this. I'll I'll go away and I'll get a big coat, fill it full of stones, wrap string around me and just jump in the sea or jump in a river somewhere, somewhere where I can feed the fish. You know, that's what I'm that's my plan. Anyway, well, hopefully it doesn't come do. to that, mate. Hopefully. Well, what, have, I don't you know, I don't want to. I don't want funerals are a waste of time, aren't they? Yeah. Funerals on funerals make money for other people. They're just a waste of time, I think. They do, I, yeah. And it's you know, and the funerals are for the living, aren't they? They're they're for people yeah, who feel they, sorry for yeah, themselves. They, yeah, they are. They are. This one of my friends has just had a friend that died, um, and I was saying to him, you know, you, 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 you it, it's something you 
you can't get over. You just have to learn to live with it. Like I have to learn to live with I'm the last of my family. There is no one else. Yeah. I am the I'm the last. Apart from my dog Humphrey, you know I've got Humphrey. Yeah, I know I met Humphrey. But I, <laughs> yes, we tried tried to bite you many times. But I, <laughs> little, 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 little I don't bastard. blame them. Don't blame little them. Bastard. Yeah. But 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 yeah, Rob. I think I think that you know we you just learn to live with it. And and I, I, you know I think death isn't to be feared. It, it, it's it's you know me mom used to say what when i used to, she i used to tell her tell her i used to, she used to tell me stories when when she would put me to bed when i was a kid and i used to say tell me about the dracula story you know mm. and 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 she she said and i got really scared and she said it's not the dead you need to be afraid of it's the living and right. that's yeah. stuck with me now it's 56 years of age i still remember that yeah, and I think she was right. I think she was right. She was very intelligent woman. She was a lovely woman. She was yeah. I miss her terribly. She I was bet. a lovely woman. Well, I'm going to she interject a moment because I met you again after like after years. Really, I'd I'd moved away to Sky and um, yes, didn't have anything to do with the scene and stuff. And then you you appeared on on the radar again because my brother Jamie got involved with a, a band with you in Sidewinder this, down in Bristol. Yep. This and, is right. Uh, yeah, it was. It was Plymouth. It was Pl it was Plymouth. Plymouth. Sorry, beg, beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And and I remember coming down to see you after all that time, and you were absolutely obsessed by UFOs and stuff. And I look back yes. now, and I think the stuff that you were talking about in the early nineties, people didn't yeah. really catch up with any of that until the two thousands. Yeah. You know, and then it, it, now it's kind of like de rigueur. Everybody is interested in that. But um, yeah, yeah, you were well ahead of the curve where that was concerned. And um, right. How how was that? Did were you did you have access? I mean, this is even before the days of the internet, really, wasn't it? Was it like yes. books, magazines? What yes. was it? Yes. Um, uh, mate, um, I've got it seen. It's almost surreal. Um, I had some personal experiences myself. Okay. And my mum did too. And I, I, I learned that I learned now when I, you know, I've had a lot of time to, to uh, prioritize things about this. And um, um, my mom had her first UFO sighting and she called the radio show, James Whale, the James Whale radio show. Right. Okay. And me and my brother, well, very excited because she said, go in the kitchen, the radio's on, you'll hear me talking on the radio. So we were really excited about it. And she was, she was, she was discussing this encounter she'd had and this sighting. And, um, and James Will cut her off. He, it was banned. They really? just deleted it. Yeah, it was, it was, and that was, I'll tell you when that was, that would have been 19. 1978, a couple of years before the Rendlesham Forest incident in Ipswich, Suffolk. Wow. But yeah, that would have been 78. And um, yeah, he, he cut her off. It was it was probably too sensitive, I think. So what was it, like military information or something like that? Or what was it? What was it based around? Well, she had she she had a she had a couple of, of friends who were connected with the military. Mm -hmm. And and she had her own, she had a few personal experiences when she was a kid and when she was in her later years and um and um i started started gathering information about bloodlines for an ex for an example uh, an, an old friend of mine she her an old friend of mine from malta her nana relayed an argument that she had with someone she went on gozo to the beach to the rocks and she said it became daylight, but it was one o'clock in the morning hmm. and it became daylight. And she, she, what happened to her was she believed she was, she, she was taken somewhere and then put, put back, you know, it was a typical missing time episode. Yeah. And um, so that was interesting. And I, I started looking into this, this like family, family bloodlines. Now the, the, the girl, and, and I still know now, she also, because of the same bloodline, she also had experiences. So it's, it, I, I, I don't know, I'm still on a quest. That's, that is and... interesting because the, yeah, I think it was, um, it's either John Keel or, or Jacques Vallée who, who basically yeah. correlated, co collects all the information and says, yeah, there's, yes. you're more likely to have an experience if you are 
of gypsy background, um, North uh, North American Indian background, um, yes. particular kinds of, like you say, blood groups are suggestive of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah for, it's very true. And, you know, you're yeah. more likely to have a, 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 a um, something happen on a Wednesday evening or something crazy like that, too. So it does come yeah. down to these things. Particular people have experiences where other other people might not have that at all and be in the same company. Yes. Yes. Mm. This the, it, it, it changed, though. You know, that you know, the typical abduction scenarios that 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 that, that I fervently believe do does happen to people. Um. I'm sure you know ninety five percent of it is 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 military. It, it yeah. is, you know. But there's that percent that you, that you can't explain. And, and I'm not just talking about Betty and Barney Hill. You know, the first, the first, mm-hmm. um, the first uh, interracial abdu- allegedly uh, interracial abduction, and yeah. blah blah blah, and what happened there. But it changed. The scenarios changed. There was a, there was a case. There was a woman. She 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 went. She was late for work. It was her birthday, and she was in London at Hyde Park. And she was, she was, um, she rushed to work and she forgot to put underwear on. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is quite a little known case, this one. Anyway, she was lying, having a cup of tea. She was lying. It was summer. And she remembers blurting up into the air to this, to something. Mm-hmm. But what, what came out in regression therapy with this particular case on this particular, with this particular woman who is known to me, she um, was embarrassed because people could see up her skirt and she had her underwear on. Yeah, yeah. That was that was that's what makes it more real. That's her that's thought at the know. time. Is oh my god, people can see up my yeah, 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 yeah. And you're back in the room. Hello, Rob. <laughs> Hello, mate. Yeah. So um, after that brief commercial break, uh, <laughs> we're we're back again. Uh, yeah. So you did mention earlier on that your mum had um, a few books about the sort of yes. UFO phenomenon and stuff like that, and pretty pretty much well well ahead of the curve. Um, she had she she had one book in particular which I loved, and it was by John Keel, and it was it it, it talked about the super spectrum, mm, yeah, of light, and um, it was published I think nineteen sixty two. Was that the Eighth Tower by any chance? It wasn't the Eighth Tower. It's a different one. It's um, I've still got it. It's in Radstock in 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 the attic. I've still got the book, yeah. but she also had they knew too much about flying saucers by uh, Gray Volker, yeah, and she, she she had she even had documents, uh. Documents by Jack Valier and um, oh god, a host of a host of writers and 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 thinkers that were, like you said, that that were an anathema to to people like Carl Sagan, Patrick Moore. Yeah, so the kind of mainstream like conversation was all about like flying saucers from outer space, where these guys were conjecturing yeah. that actually we talk we're we're dealing with something which is much more um oh. uh, uh, of, of the earth really itself and a recurring kind of like uh, a recurring energetic that that we we interact. Yeah yeah absolutely absolutely mm. yeah so so that was that was that was the path that i had that's how i got into into all that stuff really Plus, yeah 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 and people i mean i remember i still remember people joking you know because because of the brainwashing the constant brainwashing the the the, the disinformation that you know that the hollywood b movies made mm. you know it came from outer space to suck our brains and take our gold and all this nonsense yeah. all this disinformation and um and, and and you know what for good reason because let's let, let, let let's face the facts we we now know of something called zero point energy yes you know we we know of we know of we, we now know a little bit more about electromagnetism we know that we don't need huge boosters and rockets to to get off this planet we th- there's other means you know, zero point energy. If if that that would put BP and Shell and Exxon and Texaco, they'd all go out of business. So, yeah. and it's all you know, it's all that capitalist. It's all it, it all centers around that capitalist control and mm. and everything else. Yeah, you know, it's always, the the mysterious disappearance of all these people who have initiated the 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 free energy systems. You know. But, yeah. And it's like the, you, you always come back to that same phenomena, which is they they think, well, I'm going to make a lot of money out of this. You know, I'm, I've just got to work mm-hmm. out a way to market it. And it's like before they've got their shit together, they're, they're out. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I've, I've, I think it's I think it's led. I, I think now the U.S. government is, you know, there's this new term for UFOs and it's UAP, yeah. you know, unidentified aerial phenomena. And I think there's I think now jumping forward from 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 the old school writers and 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 the mountain of data that was that's always been there just some of it difficult to find and come by um 
I th- I'm, I'm quite I'm quite fervently optimistic that there will be a fake alien invasion planned of the of, of the earth it's the next it's going to be the next thing after covid yeah. it, it, it's a it's a great way it's a great way to, to for us to enter the digital currency age yeah digital passports you know yeah. the, the, the 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 eradication of sterling silver and pounds and euros and dot and money physical money yeah. and uh, and a great way to get the support of the people. And I've been talking that's... about the oper- Operation Blue, uh, not Blue, but Operation Blue, whatever it is. Uh... Well, there's Agenda 30. There's Agenda 30 and there's this other stuff. And the, the, they're not even hiding the information anymore. It's out there. It's out there yeah. to see. And, and it's, and it, and, and it's, be, it, it, it's, it, it encompasses such a vast avenue of discussion, which we can't possibly even, even begin to touch on here. But we can mm. mention what we know. And I fervently believe there will be a fake alien invasion planned on this oh, for using, the whole, this using hologram technology and all that kind of stuff or AI, whatever, whatever. But it's a great way to garner the trust of the people. So yeah. the so the big wigs can can then institute, you know, the the, the new order. The global global sla- enslavement kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that that is one method, isn't it? I mean, the, the, yeah. I think it was Reagan that's that's that said, you know, with the the, the coming threat from space would unify everything, everybody, and bring everybody yeah. together. Yes. You know, and, and we do have this tendency, like we've seen in the last debacle over the last few years, for for weak people to huddle together for for security, um, and mm-hmm. they'll they will willingly give up all of their rights and their own. Absolutely. Sense, um, in in order to be able to 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 garner the support of their neighbours, you know. So, I, I, I take it you 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 were likewise not really somebody that wasn't too not too keen about going going along with the whole maskaloid agenda for the last few years as well. So, absolutely, I I just I just I, I disagreed from the off with the narrative. I, mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing. I remember saying to someone, uh, "They're moving the furniture around the room while we're not in it." <laughs> yeah. During them lockdowns, you know, and it wasn't it wasn't COVID. I was I was personally scared of it. Was the vaccine? It was always the vaccine. Yes, yes, yes. You know, yes, exactly. Which, yeah, it's that's the yeah. Trojan horse, isn't it? Really. So it, it is absolutely. You know, Reagan instituted the SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative. Okay, the, Star, the itself, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, the Star Wars program. So mm-hmm. that that in itself was a is a clear indicator. I mean, you know, we, we, there's this grid around the Earth. Yeah. And you know weather patterns, um, uh, whether it's Tesla technology or not, I don't know. But 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 but, but there's there's cases where you know something something could crash into this planet. The military can send the shock wave. It'll be m- m- measured on the Richter scale. Uh, it, they could you know oh, false earthquake. They go in, clean up, clean up the mess, and disappear. And then they've got the tech. Isn't it funny now? You know we can talk about this sort of stuff, and it's like people people are beginning to catch up. Because if you'd been talking like this ten years ago, it's like, oh, you fucking ten, tinfoil hat nutty, and they still say that. People. But I lost friends. I lost friends over this. I yeah. lost friends over this. The same as the same as with their five G, and the same as with them. Um, yeah. Uh, the whole the whole vegan uh, vegan belief, and I've, I've lost yeah. many friends over this. People have actively told me to fuck off. Yeah. They've yeah. actually and and actually asked me. To stop posting things on Facebook, which what you know, like concerning the animal question, and yeah. it's like, whoa, whoa, you, mm. this is wow, re- really? Okay, I've lost many friends over over these 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 beliefs and and thought processes. I, I think that I think that the whole um, social media thing was it's still oh. an ongoing experiment for a, but for a lot of us, we got burnt by that because you suddenly realise that it's not about what you thought it was about. Yes. It's not there for you to communicate any ideas. It's about creating safe spaces for people to have this kind of like mutual. Uh, absolutely. Um, so they don't like it. So it's it's absolutely pointless trying to tell anybody anything at all. So, for instance, like with myself, you know, I did a Facebook thing and then I you, you all of a sudden you've got 2000 special friends. Um, and when the, when the shit actually does go yeah. down, yeah. You all of a sudden find you don't really have many of them at all, you know. So I just abandoned. No. It. And I went, well, you know, yes, I, I see it now. It's it, yeah. all this is it's harvesting information and it's uh, it's yeah. basically inviting people to 
safe spaces, little little moral cul-de-sacs where they can be more easily controlled. Yeah. It's Mate. all measured algorithms and, and yeah, of yeah. course. You and you, you know, Rob, you said something really interesting. You said go on, sorry. Go on. You said something really interesting. Um and it was a couple of weeks ago or months ago. We were talking about music and you said you did you, you said you touched on the subject of disagreeing with the whole industry because it promotes fear mm. and it's it's all part of the it's all part of the the grand scheme of things to to um can you touch on that again it's kind of low, low, low sorry it's kind of like lower lower in the vibration basically isn't it it's sort of um yeah it's um yeah. it's encouraging us to go into um a, a sort of degraded state uh you yeah. know I, I can say that blithely now because i've kind of removed myself from that but you know obviously i've been involved with this whole thing myself so i understand it yes of course. but I, I was almost like uh, yeah. because because i'm i haven't been so deeply and so sort of perennially in, in, involved as yourself i've not uh, you know I've, I've not lived the whole thing as as much as you have but coming back to it going hang on a second this, what's wrong with this picture i was able to kind of like look at it um objectively yeah. in a sense and say actually this is encouraging a kind of like a morbidity uh, and a very negative yes um thought thought pattern which is a brilliant way of controlling yeah. people because you put them, again you stuff them into yeah. this little bag of of imagery and of um thought processes and of kind of yes. like yeah uh, st stuff that basically is they're never going to get out of you know, unless unless yeah. they have some kind of realization within themselves, it's like you have to help yourself, and you have to realize that the whole all of this stuff is coming down to you know it's like it's all down to um, discernment, and that's the same with yes. the, with the whole thing about you know some of this stuff the the subjects we're talking about here, which are very very fringe, but as you know yourself, yes. as we go through these things and we start to look at them, there's a lot of stuff out there which is bullshit, um, a yes, lot of stuff of which is which is purposeful disinformation, but you do kind of like you, you develop a, a bullshit detector for want of another word, you know, and a, yes. a, a radar that you'll say, actually that, that, that doesn't seem to, to gel at all. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to buy into that. And you kind of like, you, you try and maintain a clarity, although you're taking on board a lot of disparate ideas, but yeah. like yourself, we're almost, we're kind of like involved in a sort of alchemical process where we're trying to refine the things that we do have into yes. some some form of goal some form of, of something which is which is good and worthy and yes. that has that gives some hope back you know because i think possibly you know you and i ag agree that the 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 original impetus that we had behind the the lives that we've led particularly in the music yes. was yeah i want to i want to help people out i want to be an inspiration yeah. wanna, you absolutely know, you do something good and then coming back to this you suddenly find yourself surrounded by this sort of milieu of darkness where you're yeah. not allowed to get out of that and, it, and it's interesting it's interesting you mentioned the word vibration we're all we're all energy everything's energy the stones the soil the water the trees the plants the earth it's all energy do you know did you ever get into the conspiracy theory of um of uh how i think it was either the, the italians or the nazis changed they changed the, uh, the, 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 the concert pitch of oh, music concert pitch exactly. Yeah, I did. Yeah, four, I, I, was it four forty? Four forty MHZ? Yeah, I think, and, and, and naturally four four two or something like that. Because four four two, and they changed it. Yeah, so that when you listen to music in the natural pitch, it's yeah. kind of it. It is actually. If you've done that, of course, because it's kind of like yeah. it's quite it's yeah. quite different. It's almost well, like didn't Lemmy didn't Lemmy and Hawkwind have that box, and they they would bring it to the gigs. And it, and, and it would make people wee or, 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 or defecate or vomit. Right. Really? The sound. Yeah. 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 You so know that's that? ultra low frequency stuff. Ultra low frequency stuff. Yeah. Right. There was a kid. Yeah. There was there was a skinhead friend of mine uh, called Ezra, Edgy, Edgy Ezra uh, in Newcastle. And he was waiting for me one day, me and my brother. And we were really late in the record shop. He was waiting for there was a, a, an arcade game, a, a machine there, and he was standing next to it. And he said, and I'll never forget this. He said he got high. He was feeling high from mm. because of being next to the sound the whole time, right. waiting for us. So yeah. that you know, I was in I was in uh, Japan once, and uh, I put my head against the glass on the on the train, 
and mm. I could hear a shrill sound. And then, that, then I heard that very same sound uh, when I put my head on glass on a bus. And I said to me, mate, Aki and his, and his wife, Kimmy, I said, what's that sound? And they said, what sound? They were impervious to it. They didn't even mm. realise. And yet the, the, the other person I was with, um, uh, a, a lassie called Carol, she, she could hear it too. But no one else could. And and we heard it on a ship. I mean, whether that's some kind of programming for the Japanese people or whatever, I do not know. But it's, sound, um, it's, yeah, sound, it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. That's the key. I mean, luring, 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 luring the vibration of the people yeah. will make it easier or yeah. will make it easier for control. I started to to just listen to this stuff that was done in 528 and things like that too, 528. Right. And it's not kind of like, it actually changes the mood a lot. Absolutely. Um, you got stuff. You get all these videos. There's all these videos, isn't it, on YouTube? Calming music, like yeah, yeah. It's, it's very hippy dippy, but you go actually something something's good here. You know, yeah. So it it, yeah. it, it works. It works. Yeah. Um, uh, disco songs, pop songs. Mm. The the beats the beats are sometimes the beats can increase heart rates or yeah. decrease heart rates and all. Yeah, yeah it's there's it's a science to it. Isn't it? It's funny because going back to mothers as well. It's like um, our our mother was involved in some of these sound experiments in the seventies. Oh wow. It, yeah, in um, in Plymouth University, they used to pay people to come in and, and be experimented on, you know, for for things like this, for for advertising. Yes. Um, so she got into this, like, uh, you know, being introduced to vibratory frequencies would make you feel ill, you know, or yeah. make you feel high, and all the rest of it. So they yes. knew about all this stuff way back then. And Absolutely. Course, you go back to Tesla, and you know, he says that everything can be understood through sound and frequency and vibration. It's yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. We, we're sort of we're, we're beginning to come around to that now. And it's almost as, as though it's the information we're not supposed to know, because yeah. we we do have the capability and the capacity within ourselves to be yes. able to do something about our own. And it's so, so horribly hippie, but our own vibes, man. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, know, I know. You know exactly what I mean. It's like, yeah. Um, I'll kind of go into something a little bit here because it's like over the last few years, you know, this the the, the whole thing is like the 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 general sort of le the level of things has been so low that you've been able to feel that sort of like the undulating kind of like dark going on. Did did you? Did, there was a point. There was a point. I think it was. I think it was the, the first lockdown in England, and I felt this foreboding. I yeah. had this gloom. I had this this. It, 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 it wasn't it wasn't terrible and it wasn't terrific but mm. it was there it was and like there was this, yeah. was this feeling of, 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 of there was a feeling in the air yeah. on the planet yeah yeah and i could feel it and i said i used to say it to people you know like dog walkers or anyone i met or people i knew or whatever especially around radstock and things like this i'd say is it me or, or do, and one or two people would say yeah i get i get it but yeah the majority wouldn't and i just mm. I'd, uh, what, and they're not going oh. to you know they're not going to and this is the problem again coming back to this trying to communicate ideas of things that you're sensing yourself it's yeah. it's it's a complete waste of time unless you've got other people who go yeah yeah i get it i get it and i do and i think this the 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 state of us so i think for me like when things got to their worst point it was actually looking at the experiment they were doing in austria right where they said, where they said if you didn't do the jibby jabby uh, they yeah. were going to find them uh, like, yes. like three or four hundred euros a month and i thought yep if they get away with this then we yeah. are stuffed you we know are, yes yeah, absolutely and, and they were just about coming up to that and people were still going along with it it's like can I you know. get it yet i know then i know just on the cusp of that happening when they'd announced it was going to happen uh they had to change the program so it's like okay ukraine click and that just swiveled and the yeah. whole the whole conversation swiveled immediately into the new the new thing you know which was ukraine yeah. and it and yeah it, all the all yeah. this all the dis dis um disseminating energies from that fear yep. pattern that we've gone through it's like shit where are they what what happened to we, us now you know we had we we had all these things we had, look at what we've had in the la in the last few years all these things 9 11 black lives matter yeah uh, covid um uh, and all this other stuff and it's and, and and it's amazing how many things have gone on in such a short time. Yeah. Now, you, you, you know, we talked about this ourselves. We, we've talked about this in, in, in communications. Um, it's only now that the that 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 the final plans can be unleashed because it's took this long to do it. Yeah, we, we've been we're becoming more increasingly aware now that we have been part of this big experiment about how far can we be pushed. 
yeah. and, and, and yeah. also this very, very subtle manipulation so that most people don't feel it. So it yeah. doesn't it doesn't impact yeah. them at all because they're in a sort of bubble whereby everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's conforming. Everybody's on the program, yeah. you know, yeah. so they never encounter the sort of the, the ragged edges, let alone the people yeah. outside. And, and, you know, it feels like one of these scenes from Lord of the Rings where the, the ring wraiths are beginning to to come around. Yes. You know what I mean, it's like yeah. all of a sudden your consciousness is like, oh, dear. Right. It, I, it, it, I yes. See what's going it, on. It really affected people so bad. I was on I was on the receiving end of um, much abuse, yeah, from someone I don't I know, and from someone I knew, yeah. And yeah. it was it, it was verbal abuse, yeah, and physical th threats of physical violence, <laughs> yeah. And it and it's and it scared it, it scared me, and the it, it it got to me so much, um, being the, the alleged empath that I am, that I stayed in the house for a week. Really, yeah. Because I was, yeah. I was so, I was so distraught and so messed up. Yeah. Similar, that was similar to some of the, some of the um, death threats I received, when, when you, you yourself were pushed under the bus. Yeah. Well, you know, and I'm that gonna, affected, I'm, that I'm, affected me big time. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a note in here for anybody that's listening, and it's like there was, there were, like, I could count them on one hand, the people. That, that no, I wouldn't say st oh, it's not even standing by me because we didn't have that conversation. You know, you didn't know yeah. what I thought or anything like that. But the people yeah. stood up and said, you know, I I know this guy and I, I and I I'm not taking this shit. And you were one of the very few yeah. people that did. So I'm always going to be grateful to you for that. And I know that it was a personal sacrifice because you and I we're not going to agree on everything. But that's not a problem yeah. for me. You know, that's uh, not no, that's not a problem. Not. We kind yeah. of we bro we broadly we know that we like to think of ourselves as decent people, like you say, empathic to, yes. to a good degree that we want yeah. the best. So we're trying to figure out individually our own particular way of representing that, you know, how best exactly. to present our yes. case. Yes. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to rub each other up the wrong way about this and that and all the rest of it. But, you know, generally speaking that something happened there, which was wrong. And yeah. I didn't have anybody else around to, to stand up for me at all. And you did. And I know you, I know you took it on the nose almost literally as well because of that. And it's like, well, that, you know, that showed a lot more about, about those people than it did about the, yeah. the all, all the kind of like kerfuffle itself, because it really was a storm in a teacup, you know, the whole thing. It was. I but know. people, I people know. took it like literally personally, personally, because they couldn't yeah. control the narrative anymore. So absolutely. I was, I was supposed to be somebody that you could wind back in uh, and yeah. get them back on program, you know, like, yeah. like the Mumford yeah. Sons thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But I'm sorry, yeah. but then you, you find out you say sorry to to these assholes. That's not what they want. They just no. want blood, and they don't give up until they've got it. So you make a commitment to making your stand. That's you, and you've got to say yeah. well, that. That might always just me being on my own. Yeah, so abs I'm say, absolutely. Kudos to Scruff. Uh, well, you know, for being a good. You job. know what. I've I've never I've never really I've never really enjoyed fence sitting. I've never enjoyed it. Mm. And and w w w one thing which did surprise me, and I was really really amazed by it. I don't, I didn't even think I told you this, but some friends of mine came from Austria and they wanted to see a band called Axe Grinder in London. They were they were playing the first album from Back to Finish, and being personal friends with that band, I took them, mm. and someone someone made a fake profile and sent me a death threat said if i turn up with that gig I'm, I'm i'm going to be leaving in a body bag right yeah and this was connected with with what happened in 2018 2019 i can't remember when it was you know before the pandemic anyway anyway i got this and there's a guy known to me and he come up to me and he said i know what's going on i'm watching i've got your back all night and he and he did and nothing happened brilliant and he did <laughs> yeah it, and it was all connected with with that you know that all that horrible shit that happened, which we shouldn't even talk about because it's just negative shit. But, just, um, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, um, as I say, you know, I I very much re respect you for that, and and you know, all, no problem. Always remember, I'm right. I'm going to pull apart from this because I think we're going to have we're going to have more conversations in the future because right. you're a fascinating person to talk to about this. But Thank I want to just before you to, to kind of wind up this program. I don't know don't know what we've got left. Oh, this this has got a bit of a sniffle going on there. Just to wind this one up, we've probably got maybe 10, 15 minutes left. I wanted to pull back into your story, you know, the literal story of um, Scruff growing up, because we met each other through the um, the, the venue um, in uh, in Gateshead. Yeah, uh, the station. The station yeah, we, yeah. 
the Wolf Station, and there was also the um, the, the garage. Uh, yeah, uh, hang on, the, uh, the Riverside, the Riverside, Gateshead Riverside. Yeah, Gateshead, which is just across from the BBC or whatever down there, wasn't it? Yes. And uh, yeah, your brother at that time, um, uh, Big Toot, was was the kind of like the promoter guy. So yes. Uh, for for people that are a bit younger, before the days of the internet, what we used to do is we used to have, you know, either write letters and uh, write, yeah. write a letter back with a posted stamp or you yeah. have a local, local telephone box where you'd you'd kind of arrange to be around that telephone box at some time on a Friday yeah. night each week. Yeah. To, yeah, to yeah. A message. Yeah, absolutely. Or absolutely. if you had a friend that actually had the luxury of a, a phone in their house, you'd go around. Yeah. And, uh, and say, here, mate, here's a smoke. You know, do you mind? I about know. <laughs> and I know. Phones? It's insane. I know. It's insane. Yeah. How did we did, do it? You know, how did we I, do I, these things? It was all it was all letter writing and sending tapes and, and you know, I loved yeah. I loved your I, I I remember one of the first letters I got from you and it was a beautiful A4 piece of paper, photocopied, black and white, Xerox, black and white, mm. and it had the Amoebix logo and it had your address wheel, Woodborough Road. Yeah. Wheel. And, uh, and 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 I thought, how professional! And that influenced me to make my letterheads. And and I started making them around. I don't know, eighty six, eighty seven. Yeah, making letterheads as well. Yeah, yeah. So, but, um, so yeah. yeah. So meet, meeting up with you. I don't remember exactly when the first time was, but I do remember going back and stopping at your flat. And yes. like, hell, hell bastard, your band. You like these scruffy bastards with long hair. Uh, yeah, the real attitude. <laughs> Which we yeah. really loved, you know, because you come, right. come up from Bristol, you go, yeah, we, we're Stig, right. Stig put it, I give him a sticker, and, and then I seen a photograph. Someone sent me a photograph and said, look what Stig's got on his guitar. And it was a hell busted sticker. And I was, Brilliant. I was like, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, sorry, anyway. I mean, yeah, no, you no, stayed, no, no. Gonna, gonna you have, go on. Sorry. No, no, you stayed, you stayed at me. My, my, when I left the children's room, I was given a Dr. Bernardo's flat, an apartment, and you all stayed there. And then you stayed in the high rise block of flats, which is all knocked down now. There's, yeah. We've still got photographs from that, but yeah. Oh, but yeah so that was Benjamin Working Man's Club. Ah, uh, Benjamin Working Man's Club. Uh, yeah. mm. you, you stayed at my place after that. You and, you and uh, uh, God, it was you, Stig, Andy well, we, Wiggins. Yeah, uh, we came up in, in, we, had, we had the kind of like this uh, crappy old Ford Fiesta, not a Fiesta, it was like the, right. the big Ford that, that this guy Greece had. And we put right. all the stuff in and we drove up yeah. and just outside in the motorway, it's like the gearbox started to fall apart. So Shit. he was running around covered in oil and um, trying to source some parts whilst we were kind of setting up for the gig and stuff. And this and this car was just hanging. So it's like, I, I, I don't even know how we got back, but it normally have some amphetamines at the time. That's you could go, yeah, you could just you'd do You could do a couple of days of like running around and doing what you needed to do and get home again, you know? Some years before that, me, me brother, you know, he was a, very active in, you know, writing for Maximum Rock and Roll, doing scene reports yeah. and um, and writing for lots of different magazines and, and putting on shows and putting on gigs. And um, he put the Subhumans on. And this would have been 82 or 83. So before the first time Amoebix came up to um, came up to Gated. But uh, Dick, Dick. Uh, Subhuman was driving by himself in a car. And he had a crash, and the rest of the band turned up, right. and they still they still played. And I I, I I jumped on stage and did about three songs, and it was great. Of course, but, you did. Yeah. You know all the lyrics and that. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You knew all that. Yeah, it was the songs were peroxide animal. And uh, yeah. or something uh, it might have been religious wars. I'm not sure, yeah. but anyway, but yeah, so many bands had problems getting to Gated and yeah. having car troubles and and you know it, it oh from onslaught amoebic subhumans conflict uh Zvart Framted from Norway uh, tons of toxic reasons from the US loads of bands had problems and it, well, was, it was the end of the world for, for us you know that was so far north it's like Scotch, I know my god what goes on up here it's all stotties and bodies, man and uh, yeah know. yeah we, but uh, happy times with you and uh, you and your brother. And you know, I was so sad um, to hear when he'd gone as well. And it's like, oh, damn, you know, another another good guy, um, who he, j he just seemed to have, be a good-hearted, big-hearted guy. You know, you know, we'd always planned we'd always planned to come and visit you. That was that was one of his dreams. Me and was me it? and him, yeah, we're going to drive drive up to Sky to see you. Right, that's what he wanted to do. He really did. We, I yeah. knew it didn't happen, but um. He, you know, he went into rehab. He was in, he went into rehab twice, and he got he found sobriety, but mm -hmm. he he just lapsed back. He just lapsed yeah. back into it, and and one of one of the last times I saw him before he died, um, I'd went. I'd, I I I was living in Bath. I was in Radstock, and I went to Plymouth, and I and, and I was throwing stones at his window because he lived he lived uh, high up in in on the street, 
uh, in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And um, and and th there was a guy that came in, and, and I went to the phone box, but I had I had my Laney amp head with me, a guitar case and a big heavy bag, because I'd just come off the train. Mm -hmm. And um, and there was a guy, he opened the opened the phone box and threw a, one of these big, huge bottles of water at me. Yeah. And I just, I, I, I remember it, but I, I don't know why he did it, but the guy did. And I was trying to phone my brother, trying to wait. I thought he might be asleep, whatever. He was in there, yeah. which I found out a few days later when I came back to Radstock. But um, he found sobriety and he, he, he was, but he, it, it just, he went back. So it's, it is what it is, Rob. It is what it is, yeah, you know. know. And it's, it, it, I kind of, it, it, it circles around and comes back to this thing about like, there was almost like a promotion, like an enabling of this kind of tragic thing going on as well. It's like it was it was acceptable, wasn't it, for people to be like yep. really into drugs and really into drink and like anything that 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 sent you on a downward spiral. There wasn't there weren't that many people out there to help. They, they I know, kind of like, I know. You know what? It's, it's like you, uh, the whole disorder thing in Bristol as well as around. Yeah. This this tentative kind of like messing around with mental illness and sniffing yeah. glue and being drunk yeah. and that kind of stuff. It's like if, for some of these kids, it started out as being a pose that they got into, yeah. and then some of them yeah. just ended up being that. And it was yes, just, I know, yes, I know the whole the whole the whole make homebrew not war. The, yeah. the be bad, be bad, be glad. Be fancy. glad. Yeah, yeah. And that 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 just promoted getting drunk and just yeah. that's that's one of the reasons why i left newcastle that's one of the yeah, reasons yeah. why i left gated it was it, it was it, it was it, it was just normal and yeah. i didn't want it and that's why i went to plymouth to form a new band nero circus i, I didn't want it i didn't want yeah. that i mean you know it, it was just it, it was just shit there's better things to do than stuff yourself full of alcohol and then wake up with a bad head the next day yeah i, I was kind of i was kind of the same as well i felt like that about getting out of bristol thinking how many years have I wasted doing this thing? Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I well, it took you. It took you. A, it took you a, a severe motorcycle accident, didn't it? To for you to just go right. I've got to change my life. Fuck this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were never. We we never. We weren't into drugs. We, 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 two wasn't into drugs. I wasn't. I glue sniffed as a kid, but that came with a punk rock thing. But I knew people that were getting into hardcore drugs. You know. Heroin and cocaine and so, and it was. I mean, what got me was how did they get the money for it? You know, yeah. I mean, yeah, you complain it, about not being able to to feed yourself, and you still got the money yeah. for the smack. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But donkeys are remarkably resourceful creatures, and uh, oh yes, I they, I know I I, I know, mm -hmm. and they they can I, summon up the energy to go and do a burglary as long as they know there's something at the end of it, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's you totally know, it's, you know how it is, but yeah, as I say, dark dark times, but also you know good for making connections absolutely for, for, absolutely. for good people yeah. you know the people that I was good, thinking good in your life stay there go on i was i was just thinking of something um no when i i was doing a modern english studies degree at university in bath and um i wrote a paper and the pa it was refused but it was just a test right it was mm -hmm. a test paper that i'd wrote for a science fiction group okay and it was refused and it would, and it should have received the mark, and they refused to mark it. They yeah. refused it because. You, 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 but you want to know the reason why? Go on. Because I'd listed presidential executive orders, uh, which are real, and yeah. they, and you, and you and I both know universities are training grounds mm -hmm. for for people that will enter life into professions that do bad things. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. You know, this whole yeah. like um, the 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 march through the institutions is is a real thing. Yeah, it was two. It was two that said that because I told him I was really upset, and I and I'd spent quite a bit of time writing this 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 story, and and putting in little little nuggets of, of true information, and it was refused, and it wasn't even marked. And mm. my brother, two, it was two who said, "Don't you realize that these places are training grounds for people that enter life and do bad things?" Yes, exactly. Now, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to wind up soon because um, time's running out on this, but we are right. gonna come back. Okay. we're gonna have another talk soon. Um, okay. I, I I want people in the comments to uh to to get back to us. Um, any questions that you've got and things like this because I'm finding this a, a fascinating conversation, and I'm just okay. going to kind of I'm going to wind up with a couple of things here which we'll need to do fairly quickly. But I would say to you at the moment, is that uh, I, I normally have these kind of questions. Is 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 there like a book that you're reading at the moment? Is there something which is there a book which you you would say to people this is really essential. This is something you need to get hold of. I'd, 
I found Suzanne Capella's The Pornography of Representation very, very interesting. Okay. Because I, it, it inspired me to um, try and block out advertisements, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and, and I actually found a method of, of, of censoring stuff that I don't want in mind, that I don't want in my mind. Okay. And that book influenced me. That and Confessions of an Economic Hitman by... Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I've heard about that yeah. one. Yeah, wow. that was a great book. But yeah. but yeah, so those two books. Um, the first book I ever read, it was I was in the children's room, and it was it, it, it was a great book, and I really enjoyed it. A Sense of Freedom by Jimmy Boyle, a Glaswegian. Oh gangster. yeah, yeah, Jimmy Boyle, yeah. Yeah, Bad and then, then 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 the book H, um, yeah. uh, Diary and Prostitute of a Heroin Addict, uh, yeah. Christian F. And I remember I, uh, that one. That. Yeah, remember reading that yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. But um, but no, I mean, I've, I've got the, the list is many, Rob. I'm a bookworm, yeah. and, and you know, so but but for for things that are for things that make you really think that those titles I've just said, really excellent. Yeah, well, we're going to get back into this because you you are okay. a, you are a many, many storied novel yourself. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, just before we wind up, um, I want to I want to condense you at this point and say if, if you've got like one line of good advice at this point in your life you know through the, the the things that you've done what would that be well how could you sum up your attitude your your message to other people what do you think that might be be good to people and just don't be a cunt yeah perfect perfect um scruff you are a a, a wonderful person and um, brilliant to talk to and i'm gonna thank you uh, I'm likewise gonna this here. Uh, i'm hoping that we're gonna do a part two soon uh there's a lot okay. there's a lot to talk about yeah, there is. Okay, right. that's great, Rob. I've really enjoyed this. Thank you. Me too. Uh, be 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 good to you, to your people as well up there at that end, and uh, I'll speak to you again soon, mate. You too. Thank you, Rob. All the best, mate. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. Bye bye.